Hello everyone and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to be breaking down the simple render from procedural modeling tips and tricks to Solaris workflows. So yeah, let's start from the geo container in here on stop. I always like to do things on subs first instead of doing a sub create because then I can export easily to USD and reference that in Solaris. So <clears throat> of course I started by modeling the the bottle so the wine bottle uh doing a resample just to um, after the of course drawing the point for, for the bottle i'm doing a resample just to sort the points so i'm not even subdividing i'm creating in here let me increase in here the point size and also in here so i'm creating in here a group by range to select part that i'm going to extract later then also selecting a point for the uv themes Revolving, and at this point I'm also creating the UVs, as you can see, but I'm not going to use these UVs because they are not very good, in my opinion, at least for the, uh, the thing I want to do. And But I'm still computing them because I'm going to use the seam for later, so I don't have to select it manually. Fusing, because at the bottom there's an open point in there. Group promoting the seam to edges and UV flatten, and I'm using Rectify. I know this is not very accurate because the the uvs are decreasing at the top but i prefer it this way because i can have uh, clean uvs to work with to do the projections from here this is just the bottle geo so i'm poly extruding subdividing subdividing a bit more for some reason and as you can see i have the thickness and that's the bottle then we move into the top part and i completely forgot how is that called but yeah i'm gonna call it co uh, top parts so i'm group promoting that range uh, point attribute that uh, got promoted to got um, expanded to all these frames blessing that part picking picking a little bit and creating uh, the unshared points group with the boundary group so i can promote uh, them individually so i can for example fill the top part and not the bottom uh, from here, what am I doing in here? So <clears throat> I'm selecting uh, every other vertices, vertex, and promoting to an edge group. This way, I can convert this to line and create at the end the drips of this top part. As you can see, this is the top part that I'm referring. So in order to do that, after the convert line, I'm creating an up attribute just by normalizing P. And I can show you actually how that looks. So that's up, as you can see, just pointing out and i did normalize it but uh, since i'm working in real world scale this might be a bit too small for the visualizer then i'm selecting randomly some prims with this random expression and have a seed and whatnot blasting those prims doing a, a an attribute randomize for a carve attribute that i'm feeding in here to the carve so this is new, I believe it was introduced in Audini 20, so you can carve by attributes. So some are longer, some are smaller, just feeding these attribute randomize. Resampling, creating the B scale with these back snippets just by creating a ramp on the curve view, because I'm outputting curve view in here. And <clears throat> then make sure the mean P scale is 0 0.6 with this max expression. Then just sweeping, and I'm using a second input in here, which is this flat shape. So I get this flat look instead of the rounded one by default. VDB from polygons, and in here I'm doing the 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 this part. So I'm blasting away those bottom primitives by grouping by range with the divisions of that revolve. So always procedural. Polyfilling on the top. Uh, Extracting this polyfill at the bottom, doing a slight transform, remeshing, and mountain, so I can boolean out the shape and extract the largest piece, as you can see in here. So I have this randomized at the bottom. Doing a poly extrude subdivide that is not working perfectly in here because we have that the boolean, but then I'm just doing a BDP from polygons combined with SDF union, and we have both shapes united, then VDB reshape, VDB smooth. VDB reshape again to do some dilation and convert it. But since I don't like this topology, since I have exocyte quad remesher, I can easily remesh it. It didn't work so well with uh, Aldini's default uh, quad remesher, so I ended up relying on this. I try to avoid to use plugins for tutorials because some of you might not have it, but this tool is really, really good. This exocyte quad remesher. And just adding some color, 
Uh, in here, these pink nodes are the ones that I am driving in a top net, by a top net, I mean, uh, to randomize the variations that I'm going to cover next, then just doing a name and deleting some of the attributes. So what else am I missing in here? So we covered this part, we covered this part. And after this bottle, I'm creating some dust with airs. So I'm blasting just the outside part, merging it over with this top, which right now it doesn't show because uh, the variation right now is set to not show that top part. But anyways, I'm creating a, an attribute noise vector. So just a zero centered offset. And then in here, I'm just creating a mask. So as you can see, I'm creating a mask to fit the dust layer and the air generation. So just adding a bit of noise to the normals and capturing the normals out twice. So the parts that should collect dust. And I'm adding a bit more uh, randomizing randomization since in my reference it was all over the place. Doing an air gen in here, masking the thickness by a mask and masking also the density by that mask we generated. Set the length randomized. Uh, let me see, do some, do some bending also, and some freeze, and some clamping here, because I noticed in my reference that some of the, the dust was in similar clusters, and then a triple deleting name, and that's our dust, that will combine with a different material later. What do we have in here? So in here we have these details, I'm calling it details. It's just like a label and some some uh, chords. So I'm object merging the the bottle, then subdividing, and in here I'm creating a curve just with two points and poly poly extruding and mirroring. So it and end up intersecting the bottle. Then I'm doing a, a boolean in sim mode, using resampling and make sure it's on the Bottle, resampling, doing a small mountain to disturb it a bit, fusing, and doing a sweep. And this sweep is set to round tube and columns, and I'm also doing some twists. Then I'm doing another sweep to generate curves on curves, doing round tube columns, and also do some twisting. Then I'm doing some randomization uh, of P by using an, an attribute noise vector. And I'm also uh, setting a different offset for each cream, as you can see in here. I'm just adding to the offset. That's the that's what gives it a different look. So each uh, curve will receive a different seed. Then just sweeping with round tube, nothing special. And we get this, how is it called? Rope, some sort of rope, yeah. That's what I mean by cord. Then I'm doing another sweep on this side, but set it to rows. Sorting, lap sort with doing a circular sort. Then just grabbing the first frame, so this one in here, and blasting. Transforming it a bit and doing a sweep. And this will end up with something like this. Then after this transform, I'm selecting one of the points at the edges, doing a small transform and blasting away that specific point, or keeping that specific point. Then just duplicating, in this case I'm using an attribute wrangle running by uh, numbers. I just need two points, so that's easy. <clears throat> then we can take the lmnum, which is like ptnum in this case, or the, the iteration that we're running, and do a zero centered offset with this sign. Then we can move the position dot z and uh, move it uh, a little bit so you can control these in here how they move. So it was just a quick way to create two points. Then adding and poly extruding, subdividing, doing a mountain, and adding some thickness. So that's how I created that detail in there. So for some reason I press shift S. Yeah, now the so I prefer the wires like this. So let's see. We have this. Then I'm also doing some cork in here. So that's pretty simple. Just uh this is not the cork. Yeah, it is the cork. So how am I doing that? Subdividing, polyfilling, blasting away the fill, picking it a little bit, scale it, reverse it, extruding beveling, doing the quadri measure, and selecting manually some seams and doing the UVs, as you can see. And subdividing and mountain, that's the core, really simple. Did I cover these? Yes. So that's basically it. Then, all these pink nodes are driven 
by a top network. So as you can see, I have the, the noise offset, so I can have different dust patterns. And I'm uh, driving that by a wedge that is called tops offset for noise. Then I'm also running... Um, so did I cover this? Yes. Then I'm um, running in here a random rotation around Y, so I can have a different... Instead of generating different models, I'm just offsetting around Y, randomizing the rotation, so it feels different. So I didn't put too much effort in creating uh, nice variations, but you can see in here, if I enable this node and generate node, so if I actually look at this and disable the UVs and the attributes, let's see if we can see this. So yeah, so as you can see, I'm also uh, switching in here between, so when I have this, for example, this top part, I'm switching in here between zero and one, so I can have I can either have it or not have it. If I don't have it, I still have the cork on the on the bottle. So this is my first variation with the fur for the dust and just the bottle. Then I have a second one which has the detail and the top part and so on. So that's just generating different variations. And that's pretty easy, just with a wedge, creating in this case a random integer, uh, random integer and connecting the, those to the switches and also random floats for the random rotation and the offset of the noise. Then just outputting that to geometry and creating the USD variants, which I won't cover in this particular case because there are easier ways to do it and I'm going to link below a video uh, that I followed to do that. So that's basically the SOPS part. Now let's move into LOPS. So I created a camera also in here. And first of all, I'm referencing the, the geometry, which has different variations model. So I can show you in here. As you can see, I have the different variations, which in this case, I just generated five since I didn't have many attributes to play with. Explore variants. So I can actually explore variants and set it to use bounds. And there we have, we should have a name in here. Uh, okay. So these are the different variations. I'm gonna just duplicate them. Then I'm flattening the stage so I can feed this to an instancer, which is really, really basic. It's just a grid and we are saving in here a bottle ID so I can randomize a bit on shading. So in this case, each point number gets a different ID. Then I'm doing a backdrop just by using a grid and bending it up. Nothing too complicated. Then we're going to check out the materials. So for that, I'm gonna actually... So before the materials, I just have two lights. One warmer in here on the left as main key light and one fill light, which is slightly cooler. So more bluish, uh, just to fill in the... I'm not a specialist on lighting, but I think it worked okay. So let's do a small render. And I think this... Let me make sure uh, I go to camera, disable this, or I can leave it, that's okay. So, so uh, let's check out the materials. So for the bottle, what am I doing in here? Can I go in? Okay. So I didn't cover the, um, the label, but I just used my texture projection tool to do a projection, or in this case tool, that I, I can later link with the... Um, with this file node. So in here, I'm just promoting the file attribute and uh, giving it a default location for the copnet where I'm doing the projection. So that's the projection. Then I'm blending in with a color. So the, the bottle color, which is greenish and do some transmission and whatnot. Then from here, I'm blending two materials with a material X mix. And the second material is just a dust uh, so I'm just increasing the roughness and doing some sheen. So I can actually show you, sorry. If I do this. So it's not actually very visible in this case. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to connect this to the surface. And as you can see, I have, um, I'm offsetting the position with that bottle ID that we created. So we get a different pattern on each bottle. So just loading a position, then doing a random float from that bottle ID and adding it to the position and feeding that to the Karma X style track planner. So we get this texture, which is just a texture I found I have uh, in, on my library, doing a conversion to RGB and feeding that to the material. So that's the dust. Uh, I don't want to visualize this, sorry. 
So as you can see, we have this sheen and mixing with the uh, with the airs that we have in here, which just have a basic material, nothing too complicated, just a gray material, and it works okay. And then we also have the bottle mat. I can show you how that looks. So nothing complicated, as you can see, just some refraction and some roughness. And when I mix both, and for the mix factor, I'm reading in that mask attribute we created from that the combination of the normals dot y and the noise to offset a bit. And I'm loading that as a mask, but I'm also increasing the outflow and contrasting a bit the mask so I can have more dust collecting even on the flat areas, on the non-dust areas, I should say. So in the end, looks something like this. But then the trick in here is how do we get um, random variations uh, uh, of texture? And before I show you that, since I'm doing the instancer in here, I'm also playing with the seed to, to get different variations of bottles, as you can see. And yeah, that's basically how I'm doing the nothing really complicated, just playing with the random seed in here. For the texture, so as you can see, uh, in this case I'm assigning the bottle, but I'm overriding in here with this assigned material. And don't, this is not really complicated. Uh, let's see. I'm assigning to the bottle geo, so these are the primitives. This is just an assigned material with a vex expression. Then the material pads, I'm loading that the material pads. Then in this vex expression, I'm first of all uh, splitting the prim pad, which is this one in here by so i can actually show let's see so let's print have the name that i'm doing in here and as you can see we have the different i'm just splitting by the forward slash and we get the different uh, strings and we need to save that as an array then i'm doing uh, op digits to extract the number or in here of the model variant so as you can see we have 0 1 2 3 4 and that way i can drive a random using that seed and have a different variation for for each file so in this case i have two projections so i'm just uh building the path in here so to the texture projection then i have texture projection one and two so this way i can uh, feed that random between zero and one so i can add one to be between one and two and do the rest of the path then in here on the cvex bindings i'm binding that file attribute file parameter that we have in here promoted so as you can see it's named file and then i can link that to the file name that we created in here in the expression and if I do a render, I can actually show you how that looks because I'm also creating a seed in here. So I shouldn't print this, sorry. So as you can see now, we, they are both have the same. So I need to play with the seed and get a different variation. So now they still have both the same. So now is the other way around. So between zero and one, it will output uh, a different uh, variation. So that's how I'm building the... And you can do the same with random colors, random roughness for each ID, and so on. And you can also bring uh, prim var attributes. So as you can see, previously I was using the USD prim var function to bring in the... and then feeding the, the prim pads, which in this case was name and the first... the first... So, sorry about this. So I was bringing the... The first uh, string of this split and that's attribute that i've created the bottle id so in this case i didn't need it because i already had a different number for each bottle on the model variation so yeah then a camera some depth of field some karma samples rendering with xpu and yeah that's basically how i created this render as always you can grab the full scene on my patreon alongside with exclusive tutorials all the project files from my videos and if you enjoyed this one and learned something new, please feel free to leave a comment. I don't ask for subscriptions or anything like that, but a comment always goes a long way. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.